Okay, hi, welcome everyone to this week's Warrior Wednesday webinar. My name is Connie Wilson. I am a missions counselor at the University of Hawaii at Manoa uh, for Office of Admissions. Um, so we're hosting this webinar series to prep our students for registration. So if you clicked on this link to register, that means that you are either um, a, a major that is in health sciences or you're interested in health sciences. So I am joined today by our many guests today. So thank you, special shout out to them for um, coming on and connecting with you. Um, after this webinar, uh, we will have question and answer time. So just to give you an overview of the day, we'll be having each of our guests present about uh, their majors or course programs and any other information that um, they think is um, important for incoming students, freshmen or transfer to learn. Um, and then we will have question and answer. So thank you everyone. Um, so I'm gonna have all of our panelists um, introduce ourselves, and then we can get started. So, Martin, you're in this corner right next to me, so I'll have you introduce yourself first. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Martin Motooka. I am from the College of Tropical Agriculture and Human Resources, um, and I am an academic advisor. Hi, everyone. I'm Jolene Muneno. I'm with the College of Education, and I'm an academic advisor. Hi, everyone. I'm Michelle Tagorda. I'm with the Office of Public Health Studies, and I'm an academic advisor. Hi everyone, I'm Kiana Shiroma, the director of the Pre-Health Pre-Law Advising Center. I hope you all are safe and healthy during these crazy times. Hi everyone, my name is Leilani Harjati and I'm an academic advisor at the Manoa Advising Center for Exploratory Students. And I'll be assisting with the chat and some of the Q&A today. And Leilani was very pivotal in getting these webinars together, so a special thank you to Leilani, thank you. Um, yay! So with that, we can get started with our presentation. So we can now show you our um, slide that we have prepared for today. All right, everyone. So I have the pleasure of getting us started today. Um, again, as Kiana had mentioned, we hope this finds you safe and well, you and your loved ones are safe and well during this time. And, and so today we have a great presentation ready for you folks to introduce you to the field of health sciences, but also to highlight a few of the programs available for you to explore or pursue here at UH Manoa. Um, so as we go through a few introductory slides, if you could help us by um, sharing what your major is in the chat box is just for us as panelists to get a feel of who's joining us today. That would be great. Um, again, we appreciate you taking the time to spend um, today with us to learn more about health sciences and our individual programs. So what is health science? Well, health sciences refers to a large group of disciplines related to the delivery of healthcare to humans and animals to the application of science, engineering, mathematics, and technology. In other words, it is a field in which knowledge is taken from science and other related sources and applied to practical and clinical practice, practices to maintain and improve the health of living beings. Um, at UH Manoa, we have a number of fields of studies um, available for students to pursue the health sciences. So the health sciences include the broad range of potential occupations and specializations where students can really build a, a nice and strong foundation within the field. Additionally, with an ever growing and changing and also aging population, there is a need for skilled professionals um, in this area of health sciences. So again, we're excited to highlight a few of these health sciences fields with you today. And so I'd like to begin with highlighting a little bit about public health. So as I, in my introduction, I had um, mentioned I'm the academic advisor with the Office of Public Health Studies. So with the Office of Public Health Studies, we focus on public health. So what is public health? Well, public health is the science dedicated to health promotion and disease prevention in populations and communities. So public health promotes and protects the health of people and the communities where they live, learn, work, and play. So while doctors and other clinicians working in the field treat individuals who are sick, those working in public health their main focus is to prevent people from getting sick in the first place, 
Um, and so we do that in different ways. We promote wellness by encouraging healthy behaviors. Um, we also work with um, preventing and understanding diseases. So current events right now surrounding cor the coronavirus pandemic um, focuses on monitoring diseases, understanding how diseases exist within a population, but also educating our public um, on ways to stay healthy and prevent um, acquiring those infectious diseases. Other things we focus on is coordinating and implementing interventions to, do, to reduce disease. So that includes like vaccinations, encouraging um, children as well as adults to get vaccinated. And also we like to focus on the research of understanding the different risk factors that um, relate to different diseases. So for example, rat lungworm disease is a issue that we are conscious about on Hawaii Island that involves fresh produce, um, slugs that exist in gardens, and the, the adequate use of washing those vegetables to prevent acquiring that disease. And so behaviors also play an important role in public health and how we can prevent disease. So this is, these are some examples of the science um, within pub the public health field and other examples of how we um, see public health in action on the next slide also includes some of the healthy behaviors that exist that we like to promote. So physical activity, um, eating healthy fruits and vegetables and other foods, also promoting kind of fresh produce and through aquaponics or gardening in, in folks' backyards. And so we also like to promote healthy environments, what we call the built environment. So making sure our communities are built healthy in a way that promotes um, folks that can live, work, and play healthier. So thinking about bike lanes or sidewalks or parks and playgrounds where physical activity and safety is at the forefront. And so again, with public health, we like to build healthy communities. Um, and so public health is a very broad field. Um, and so one of the best ways for students to learn if public health is for them is to take our introduction to public health course. So on the next slide, we provide some additional information about what um, our intro to public health is about. So um, if you're exploring or want to explore a little bit more about what public health is, we encourage students to take our public health 201 introduction to public health. Um, in this short kind of introduction today, I gave you glimpses of examples of what public health looks like. And so this semester long class is an opportunity for students to really learn more deep and dive more deeply into those different aspects of what public health is. And so this is a great way for students to um, learn and be introduced to the field of public health. And on the upside, it actually also fulfills one of your general education requirements, um, which is uh, the diversification of social sciences. And so you can definitely have a conversation with your academic advisors to learn more about how this class could fit into your academic plan. And so public health, again, is a great field for students um, stand alone and so where students can pursue the bachelor's of arts degree in public health our graduates go on to work in hospitals community health centers nonprofit organizations or our state or different state agencies um, but it also can help complement uh, different careers where students go on to maybe a clinical profession. Um, and so the minor in public health might be a nice complement for students to get just a little bit of background in public health, but also enhance their understanding of that field and beyond. Um, at UH Manoa, we also have graduate programs, which we can talk more about later if that's something that you're interested in. So again, I appreciate this opportunity to share what public health is about. I know in current events right now, it's something that 
a lot of our students have been volunteering with in the field, supporting our State Department of Health, um, and doing a lot of surveillance or understanding how um, the COVID-19 is impacting our communities. And so those are different ways students can get involved in the future of understanding what we can do to, again, prevent the spread of infectious diseases. So if you'd like to get in touch to learn more, happy to do that with you. On the slide here, you'll see my contact information. Um, and so I'm accessible currently over virtual advising meetings, and you can schedule appointments with me through Star Balance. And more information about advising in general can be found on our advising website. And at this time, I'd like to um, pass the baton over to Jolene um, to speak with you folks about kinesiology and rehabilitation planning. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. Hi, everyone. Again, I'm Jolene. I'm an academic advisor at the College of Education. And I'm here to talk to you today about KRS, which is kinesiology and rehabilitation science. Um, some of you might be wondering why KRS is housed within the College of Education, and um, the reason for that is the KRS major started as a major for people interested in teaching physical education, um, and then since then we've added a second major, so we have two KRS majors, health and physical education, and health and exercise science. So the health and physical education major is for anyone seeking PE teacher licensure in the state of Hawaii. And you have three options to choose from. You can choose to be licensed to teach kindergarten through sixth graders, sixth through 12th graders, or kindergarten through 12th graders. And examples of courses um, these students would be taking would be introduction to physical education, current trends in health, sports, biomechanics, physics, anatomy and physiology, um, promoting a drug-free lifestyle. And then for our KRS health and exercise science majors, um, we actually have a really broad range of uh, career interests within this group. This is one of the largest majors on campus. Um, so we have people interested in athletic training, sports nutrition, physical therapy, personal training, strength and conditioning, rehabilitation counseling, and a lot more. Um, we even have people interested in being a physician assistant, being physicians, um, nursing. So um, it's a very broad uh, major in terms of career options. Um, examples of courses that these students take would be Introduction to Kinesiology, KRS 203. Um, we also have Chemistry, Physics, anatomy and physiology, nutrition, emergency care and first aid. Uh, in their last year, our KRS health exercise science majors take um, KRS 488, which is a 160 hour practicum where they get hours in a real situ you know, in, in a setting that's similar to what career they want to pursue. So um, it's real hands-on experience. Uh, our students really enjoy their Keras courses because they're hands-on and they can really see the direct connection between what they're learning and the how to apply it to their chosen careers. Um, so on this slide, I'd like to share with you some tips for our health and exercise science majors. So um, for, for your major requirements, you might have some options of courses to choose. So we just wanna make sure that you make an educated decision when choosing those courses. And by that, I mean, if uh, graduate school is remotely in your future, research what the course requirements are for admission into those graduate schools. And the example I'll give you is for our anatomy and physiology requirement for health exercise science. So for this, you have the option of either taking a five credit KRS 113 course or you can take Physiology 141, 141 Lab, 142, and 142 Lab. All together, that second option is eight credits. So you have a five credit option or an eight credit option. Uh, some graduate schools may accept one over the other. So uh, sometimes we see, uh, we meet with 
students who are interested in attending uh, physical therapy school, and we advise them to choose the eight credit option, the physiology 141, 142 plus lab, because generally PT schools require the lab component as well. So they would not accept the Paris 113. So that's just one example. If you have any questions about that, do your research and also speak with your advisor. All right, next slide. So um, on this, on my last slide, I'd like to share with you how to make an appointment with uh, an advisor. And so as a KRS major, you have two sets of advisors. You have us, me, and the other advisors in the Office of Student Academic Services in the College of Education. And you can make an appointment by clicking on that link. Um, and then the second advisor you have is Da Hool and she is the KRS advisor within the KRS department. So you are welcome to make an appointment with either one of us. Um, it's really up to you to start. And that's it for me. Uh, there are no questions. I'm gonna turn it over to Martin. Okay. Hi everyone, uh, Martin again from the College of Tropical Ag and Human Resources, also known as CTAR. Um, just a brief history, we were founded in 1907. And for those of you who are on it, yes, it's the same year that UH Manoa was founded because we are the founding college for the entire system. So you're welcome. Um, okay, so within our college, we're a small college within the large university. So we have nine majors listed on the next slide. And so uh, we have animal sciences, biological engineering, dietetics, fashion design, and merchandising, our food science and human nutrition, human development and family studies, molecular biosciences and biotechnology, natural resources and environmental management, and tropical ag and the environment. So very diverse offerings, but the, the majors that I would um, cover today are the five that are underlined. So the first major is animal sciences. Um, and so you may be wondering what's animal sciences doing in the health sciences uh, webinar? Well, animals need to be healthy too. Um, so that's why, well, and then it's a, it's a good jumping off point for those, um, for students that are interested in going into veterinarian school um, or for students that would like to work with animals straight out of undergrad. So we have students that work on like wildlife preserves are for, for our zoos both locally and uh, nationally. Um, coursework in cover, uh, covers um, the anatomy and physiology of animals, um, pre-vet medicine, breeding and genetics, nutrition, as well as animal production. Uh, our next major is biological engineering. <clears throat> and, and the next slide, yeah, sorry, okay. Um, so this is a pretty intense major. Um, there's 120 credits required. Uh, all 120 credits, there are zero electives out of those. You will go all the way up to Calculus 4. So for us, it's important that our incoming students start off the math sequencing as soon as possible. Because if you are not ready for Calculus, that's fine. But we want you to start with the prerequisite math courses um, as soon as you can. Uh, but for biological engineering, you know, students will find employment both, um, you know, locally as well as nationally in, in the bio industries, uh, both uh, in the public and private sector. Um, there is a lot of overlap with uh, other engineering programs, such as environmental engineering. Um, okay. And then our next major is our dietetics and food science and human nutrition. So <clears throat> there's a lot of overlap between the two. And at one time, they were all housed under one degree, but we had to separate them because our dietetics major is the only program that's accredited by Ascend through, uh, in the state. And that's important if you are interested in becoming a registered dietitian. So the admissions requirements to become a registered dietitian uh, require or to join our dietetics program is you have to be in junior standing. So have completed 60 credits 
with very specific prerequisite requirements. So for all of our incoming freshman students or for transfer students who do not yet meet the prerequisite courses, uh, they will all start within our food science and human nutrition degree. Uh, we have two pathways within our fishing or food science uh, major. We have our, uh, our food science, which is geared for students who are more interested in um, the sciences side of, of food. So like um, food engineering, food safety requirements, working for larger companies, developing uh, different food protocols, um, different flavors. And then we have the human nutrition side uh, for students that are more interested in the nutrition um, for like um, working as a nutritionist. And then to be a registered dietitian, um, that's how you can work for um, government agencies or hospitals and clinics. Uh, to be an RDN, there is a didactic internship, which is, which is a year after you graduate. Um, so we advise our students interested in dietetics early on to plan accordingly um, for that. And then our next major, on the next slide, is our molecular biosciences and biotechnology major. Um, this major uh, is geared for students that are interested in research, but also a lot of students that would like to go on to medical school will choose this because there's a lot of prerequisite requirements for med schools. Um, so you do the general biology, chemistry, and physics, uh, but there's also a cellular and molecular biology component to it. Um, so students, you know, uh, once they graduate with their undergraduate degree, have the option to go on to professional schools, such as uh, pharmacy schools or, or med schools, or they can go straight into different research opportunities. Um, another pathway is like forensic sciences uh, from our MBB major. And then our next major, wait, sorry, the next slide. Okay, sorry, no more majors. Um, for all of our, the programs that are all of the majors within CTAR, um, and the, especially the five that I talked about, um, are bachelors of science. So we highly recommend and encourage all of our students before they register to take the chemistry and math placement exam. Um, so right now the chemistry placement exam, you would take through La Lima. So you could visit the school's website uh, listed here uh, within the slide. Um, you can also, it's easily found through the chemistry department's website. Um, and so that is free to take. Um, and so all of our, the, the five majors that I covered, you know, it's highly recommended that you start with general chemistry for your first semester. Um, the math placement exam uh, is found on their math department's website. So for the math placement, we usually have two options for students where you can come to campus if you're, if you're here locally, and you can, you can take the, the placement exam. Unfortunately, the university is doing the, uh, you know, everyone's virtually working. So the in-person placement exam is no longer an option currently. Um, right now, the only um, option for students to take the math placement is through ProctorU. Uh, there is a fee to take the test if you opt to do it um, through them. And, the fee, I believe, is seventeen fifty. Um, so what we've been doing, so depending on your major, uh, we would suggest doing the chemistry placement if that fee is an issue. Then that way you can start the chemistry um, and biology sequencing within your first semester um, and then do your English. And then hopefully everything will resume within the fall semester so that you can take the, the math placement test um, in your first semester, and then you can start the math sequencing in the spring semester. But we definitely recommend, regardless, doing math within your first year. Um, even if, you know, it's not biological engineering and you don't have to go all the way up to Calc 4, uh, even if you do, like, animal sciences, for example, only requires pre-calculus. But we still re recommend taking it. Um, as soon as you can, because what we find is that students are, the longer that you've taken, uh, are you're further away removed from your last math course, the more information we tend to lose. Um, and if you want an example of that, 
ask your parents for help on your math homework tonight and just see how, how quickly they reach for their phone. Um, because it is, it is challenging. It's something that if we're not using, we're losing. So definitely take it. Um, and, and you know, it'll, it'll help. Okay. And then the next slide. So there are exceptions to taking, um, the placement exam. So depending on if you've taken AP courses in high school and if you scored high enough, have your official AP scores sent to our admissions office so that they can put it in. Um, and so you can start off in the appropriate level of uh, courses. The other option is what, uh, what you scored on your standardized test. So either the SAT or ACT. So below is listed the scores. Um, so if you've placed or if you scored, if you hit these scores on either the SAT or ACT, um, then you may be exempt from taking the, the placement exam. But if you have any questions about that, you can definitely follow up with your academic advisor or the admissions office. Um, so within our academic advising uh, for the college, there, there are three of us. Um, and so currently we, you can book an appointment through our advising website listed here. Uh, soon, uh, we'll, we'll be like um, Michelle and we'll be joining Star Balance as well. Uh, but for now, just go to, to the advising website through our college and then we'll, we'll let you know how to schedule an appointment. Um, also on our website, we have what's called our online major handbooks. And I definitely recommend uh, going there and then you can, depending on which major you're interested in, there's a plethora of information within that as well. So if you have any questions, please feel free to, to ask in the Q&A section. And then I believe next is Kiana. So. Hi everyone. So thank you so much for having me. Um, I, like Martin said, I'm Kiana. I'm from the Pre-Health Pre-Law Advising Center. So I just wanna be really clear in that we do not have any majors within our office. But instead, what we do is if you want to pursue, let's say, medical school or dentist, dental school after you graduate with your bachelor's degree, then we are the office for you. And so we are a supplemental office in the sense that you have your major advisors like Martin, um, Michelle, and Jolene, just like how they mentioned earlier. But we would also be in addition um, to you in terms of advising. And so we would help you prepare for um, your application regarding the fields listed here. So we are located in Sinclair Library. So there's a picture um, in my background of that building when you get to our campus. And so let me talk a little bit more about what that means in terms of maybe being a pre-med or pre-dental student or so forth. Um, so this is our website here, and uh, I did want to share that in addition to myself, we do have peer advisors who are pre-health and pre-law. Um, our pre-law advisors are also um, law school students too, um, which is great. And a lot of our pre-health advisors are oftentimes pre-health themselves. And so this is our website here. And if you click on um, that second tab that says health, there'll be a drop down menu of the different fields that we advise on. And if you click on medicine, which is definitely like our biggest field that we advise on our most popular one by far, then what we'll pull up is um, this web page here. And so, um, you know, as an incoming freshman, uh, most of the information that you may be looking for would be in our prepare button. And in that button, you'll see a list of commonly recommended classes. Um, however, like Jolene said earlier, right, if you're looking at specific schools already, like, for example, a lot of um, students want to apply to the John A. Burns School of Medicine because it's the only medical school in Hawaii, then they have um, a little bit of a different set of requirements. But we have, um, for each of the fields that we advise on, we have a chart here because ideally when you start to apply for medical or whatever kinds of health professional schools in your junior and senior years, you want to be able to apply to as many schools as possible. So the national average um, and also UH Manoa's average as an example um, from medicine, the uh, average is 17 schools that students apply to. So that's a lot of schools and you wanna be able to apply to these schools. And the first thing that you need to have are the prerequisites. 
And so it doesn't matter what major you choose. Um, it could be biology, dietetics, KRS, um, anything. It doesn't matter. But for the schools, what is of more concern is that you just fulfill the prerequisites and then you earn your bachelor's degree. So in addition to the classes, um, Schools also want to see if you get the experience. And then actually for me as your pre-health advisor, this is my main concern for you too. It's more so just making sure that your chosen field is the right field for you. And the only way to do that is to get some kind of exposure to it. And so obviously right now that might not be possible um, because we do want to stay at home and be safe. However, you know, when um, life resumes again outside of our rooms, outside of our homes, then that's when I strongly encourage you to shadow. And so um, each link provides more information on how to get these kinds of experiences. But for shadowing, um, usually the best way to do that is just to ask people that you know. So for example, if you want to be a doctor, ask your pediatrician, ask uh, maybe your mom's doctor, because having that personal connection will definitely help you get the best or um, yeah, best results in terms of finding shadowing opportunities. And from there, you know, I do want you to be really thoughtful about these experiences and see whether you can really live that day-to-day -day life of doctors, because it's not like Grey's Anatomy, although I love that show, that's my favorite show, uh, you know, not all of them are nearly as hot or um, as you know um, uh, invested in their hospital as doctors usually are, right? So I want you to get real world experience, okay? And so um, going a little bit further, some things you wanna think about is really, are you comfortable with handling someone else's blood, guts, feces, right? Whatever comes out of the body, you might have to actually touch that, right? And so I do want you to get that experience right off the bat. So one example is that um, my brother-in-law, he, he was this huge, you know, 300 pound lineman, full ride to BYU. He always wanted to be a nurse. And so he got into nursing school. His first clinical was in an ER. He, um, they walked in and a patient had like sliced open his hand, like with a nail. There was blood everywhere. He took one look and he passed out. He had never seen or had experience with blood before, right? And so it was just so frustrating for him that he took all of that time and energy, right? And to get to where he wanted to be. And then he couldn't stand blood. So even with his first and second sons, I kid you not, he passed out in the, in the delivery room. So he was not allowed in from his third to fifth children. So, right, like, knowing that beforehand will save you many years of all of this time, effort, and money, right? So it's not just the blood and the guts, but it's really the stress, right? Like, can you handle this kind of stress um, in your everyday life? Like, being responsible for others' well-being, that is a huge weight to carry on one's shoulders every single day, right? And um, not just for home, I mean, not just for work, but also for home too, right? Like, a lot of my students later on, they really think about what kind of parent they want to be. You know, there's some professions that requires a lot of time away from one's children. And, you know, some people are not willing to have that kind of uh, separation or time away from their families. So even if that seems like very, very down the road long term, those are things that you might want to think about now um, in terms of choosing what exact health field you might want to get into. And then once you do get into that, um, you know, kind of shadowing experiences and you do determine, you know, what exact field you want to get into, then I still strongly recommend that you get that shadowing and continue that because you do want to uh, obviously get a strong letter of recommendation from someone within that field. And then also it's a really good reminder and motivator about why you're doing what you're doing. So in addition to shadowing, and then some schools like um, physical therapy, they do require um, like many, many hours um, in addition to physician assistant as well. So you have to do these things anyway, whether it's shadowing or direct patient care. And then um, a lot of other schools also look for other experiences as well, right? They want the whole well-rounded applicant. And so that also means um, volunteering, um, research, and then also, um, you know, any kinds of 
jobs that may be helpful too, to get that kind of oral and written communication skills. So regardless of what you do though, I do want you to make sure that you're developing. So basically what I'm saying is making sure that you're giving and you're getting from whatever you're choosing. So giving means that you're contributing to that organization or to that population in need, right? So that's the giving. And then the getting is more so like what you're getting out of it, right? So for shadowing, it'd be more so the getting than the giving. So getting meaning that you're learning about the skills, you're learning about that mission, because all of this is going to be asked of you in that application that will come up in junior, senior year. So again, we just want to make sure that you're, um, you know, really getting a lot of like really thorough, rich experiences. I have some students, they spend hundreds of hours volunteering in a hospital. I'm like, great, what did you do? Uh, they changed, you know, patients' rooms. So did you see, you know, health professionals, you know, talking with each other? Nope. They just were in the room by themselves, just changing sheets, right? So they didn't give you know, a whole bunch, they didn't get a lot, right? So again, you want to think about the quality, the quality, excuse me, of those experiences. And so, um, you know, come visit us in PAC and we can talk about all of those things. And then again, um, once you really decide or if you're open to a specific field um, in health, then I do want to let you know that for some of these fields, we do have early acceptance programs. So as you may know, it's really competitive to get into health professional schools. So, um, you know, not to scare you, but for medicine, it's like one out of every three, um, you know, UH Manoa students get in. Um, same with PA. Uh, so we want to make sure that you have a seat saved for you in a school of your um, chosen field. So we have these programs where you can apply as a college student and if you get accepted by these health professional schools, they will save a seat for you, which is like huge, right? It takes off all of that pressure, worry, burden, wondering what's going to happen after you graduate. And so um, to be able to stay in the program, yes, you do have to have a GPA. You do need to take classes. But that's where I'm here to help you along the way, um, you know, from applying to these programs until uh, or through college and then until you get accepted officially with these schools. So keep that in mind as well. And if you have any questions or concerns, then we're definitely here for you. Um, so for advising, you can go back to our um, main homepage and it has that tab up there that's circled in red, so academic advising. And just like Michelle, um, we also go through Star Balance well. And um, let me know if you have any other questions or whatnot. But I did want to share too, um, like I mentioned earlier, you will have um, very many different advisors possibly as you go through college, which is perfectly normal. So if you get confused or if you want to change your major or you know, not sure how to contact your advisors, then um, the institution um, created this awesome advising guide website. So if you just click on those different pictures or images, um, it will show you the majors and then the contact information and then how to schedule an appointment so um, that you won't get feel confused or lost along the way. So I'm going to hand it over to Leilani now um, to uh, wrap things up. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for presenting about your programs and majors. And at UH Manoa, there are over 100 majors, minors, and certificates. And for all of these majors, all, the, all these pathways, there will be advisors to support you. And if you are undecided or you, wait, I didn't know about that awesome program, or, or if you want to be exploring more, um, we even have an undecided exploratory office, the Manoa Advising Center. So no matter what, you'll always have an advisor or advising unit or multiple to support you. I wanted to share this, our, our online summer advising workshop will be launching this Friday, May 1st. And in this workshop, it really will address a lot of the questions that incoming students face. In the chat, I could see um, some students asking about placement exams or will I need a placement exam for my specific major? There's actually a module as part of the online workshop that will address based on which major, which placement exams connect with those majors. 
also how to set up your my uh how to make my uh your uh how to navigate star gps registration and this online workshop this year will be through um canvas a canvas site and please go to our website manoa.hoi.edu slash undergrad slash summer advising um, you'll also find a lot of resources a lot of just a lot of welcome information from our advisors so i really encourage all of our incoming students to visit and check out our summer advising website and then be connected with our online workshop so, thank you so much for attending this webinar on health sciences um, stay tuned for other webinars if you're interested in those majors or um, if you are kind of exploring majors and you're just listening to all the webinars, um, we'll see you next time. But thank you so much. And if you have any questions, please reach out to your advisor. So have a great day. Thank you so much. You can go ahead and uh, leave the webinar now. Bye.